me. Good morning, good afternoon, and it's a joy to be with you today. Contrary to rumors that have been going around, the invocation today will not be given with a southern accent. I have enough trouble speaking regular American, so um, forgive me, but y'all are going to have to figure out another way to do that. So, Patty, yes, we're going to hold off for a second because we can't hear you, so our tech guy is working on the volume. As soon okay. as we have that, we'll start, okay? Gotcha. Yes. All right. All right. Can we hear you, Patty? Getting feedback. Okay, try again. Patty, speak again. Hello, testing one, two, three, four. All right, Patty, go ahead. All right. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we gather here to give you thanks for the privilege of being able to serve in this body called Rotary. You've called us from far and wide to serve others above ourselves. You've called us and challenged us to find the means to assist others in their needs. We give you thanks for the opportunity to continue that service in many and various ways. We give thanks for all the good that we've been invited to do in this club and our community. And we look forward with confidence to continue that service into your future. As we gather this day for a change of leadership in this club, we give you thanks for those who have served faithfully in their various offices, especially President Jackie, and for the good they have been permitted to do. We ask now your blessings on the incoming leadership, especially President Glenn and President-elect Aaron, that their service may be faithful and their good deeds abundant. Bless the board of directors, all the members of this club and the service they provide. We give you thanks for the gift of this day, for the fellowship we share, and ask that you would bless this club, our districts, and all Rotarians throughout the world as they seek to serve others above themselves. May all that we do this day be done to the glory of your most holy name. Amen. Amen. I am pleased and honored to introduce our guests for today's meeting. When I call your name, if you would please stand and remain standing until President Jackie has welcomed you. Bruce Bankenstein, a guest of Pre President Mike Summers. Jennifer D'Angelo, guest of President-elect Glenn Miller. Lawrence Golan, uh, guest of past District Governor Dick Brown. Pamela Gunter-Smith, guest of President-elect Glenn Miller. Coyote Malamo, guest of Van Drunk. Carol Miller, guest of President-elect Glenn Miller. Henry Nexon, guest of President-elect Glenn Miller. Mitzi Perry, guest of past President Mike Summers. And Cindy Reisinger, guest of President-elect Glenn Miller. All these P's and PP's on this list are just...
My husband is full of surprises and decided for my last hurrah, as though it's not emotional enough, that he would surprise me by having a very, very dear old friend, Bruce Bankenstein, former Rotarian, join us, along with my very, very dear sister, Mitzi Perry. It's great to see all of you here. Thank you in honor of our changing of the guard. Fellow Rotarians, will you please help me welcome our guests? The fundraising committee will meet on July 6th at 11 a.m. at the Country Club of York. The membership committee will meet on July 6th also at 1.30 here at the Country Club. And we really, really do need volunteers to help us with our Get Hooked on Fishing program. There are flyers on the tables telling you more about that. It's a summer youth program we're kicking off at Kiwanis Lake to help kids teach kids in the city how to fish and you don't know how to, you don't have to know how to fish in order to help so please consider uh, and if so give Ashley Etzweiler a call we need people on July 24th August 6th and August 13th from 7 45 in the morning to 11 15 so it's not a long uh, amount of time so please consider doing that and learning more about it and our hope is that you've been lining up players to build our team during July, each time you bring a guest to a meeting, you'll be entered into a drawing for a pair of tickets. And you have your choice, a home game of the Philadelphia Eagles, a home game of the Baltimore Ravens, or a home game of the Penn State Nittany Lions. These tickets have been generously donated to us by Fox 43 and Chris Toff. This is a really great way to introduce people to the Rotary Club of York and for some potential members. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. <clears throat> Just in case. All right. Ah. <sighs> This Rotary Year demonstrated that we truly are a people of action committed to service above self. The four-way test represents the moral code for our personal and business relationships. When you consider the actions of this club and the way in which we conduct ourselves, it's evident this litmus test is the core of our values of service. At last, we saw a healthy return to in-person meetings while managing the option to participate each week via Zoom to stay connected. We learned a lot too. For example, visitor introductions isn't as easy as it looks. We had a wide array of programs showcasing businesses, not-for-profits, and leaders with a vision and a plan for executing their dreams. We kicked it off with our impassioned city police commissioner, Michael Muldrow, who shared his dedication to our most valuable resource, our youth. Dr. Scott Moore from the University of Pennsylvania addressed the current state of US-China relations. Bobby Simpson represented the 90th anniversary of Crispus Attucks and shared the plan for a York City History Museum. We sipped wine from award-winning winery Thornhill as they presented their business model for success and unveiled their recent red blend, Big Magic, right here. We heard from Ring Caputo, CEO of Caputo Brothers Creamery, the nationally recognized award-winning leader in the artisan cheese-making realm. Jeff Hamill, president of North Metal and Chemical, a fourth-generation company, showcased the company's 100th anniversary. We had programs from other long-standing New York companies too. Rob Kinsley of Kinsley Enterprises, JT Hand of 205-year-old York Water Company, Craig Kaufman of People's Bank and Sam Miller of Wolfgang Candy Company. We honored our veterans and heard from retired Rear Admiral Mimi Drew, the first woman to serve in five command assignments. We learned about several new companies too that are right here in York. Filmmakers Doug Henderson and Matt Neese of Everything's Fire. Rebecca Shank, a chocolate confectioner with a focus on eradicating labor trafficking. Martin Fedorko of White Rose Ventures, who spoke about entrepreneur-led economic development. Fred Walker and Anthony Moore presented Four Squares Development and their promotion of home ownership and local employment. 
We had programs from Senator Pat Toomey, Representative Seth Grove, Mayor Michael Helfrich, and political analyst, Dr. G. Terry Madonna. Glenn Smith brought us up to speed on the York County craft beer revolution and provided some hoppy samples. We were dazzled by the talent of area youth during the rave reviews program at the Belmont Theater. And we were put in the holiday spirit by Susquehanna High School's jazz ensemble. Glenn Talia, legal counsel for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, gave us an overview of NOAA and how it supports economic vitality. CFO Steve Bosco of the Hershey Company shared their approach to investing in long-term growth for their future. Ross Gibby of CRDC challenged us to collect our plastics for six weeks, which will be repurposed for building products. We rose to the challenge and 46 Rotarians returned 115 bags. World-class pianist and recording artist Robin Spielberg shared how her creative business strategies kept her business vibrant through the pandemic and CJ Gross, founder and CEO of Ascension Worldwide, shared the brain science behind bias and its implications on business. And there were so many more great programs to round out our year. We said goodbye to administrative coordinator, Renee Oberdick and welcome Becky Rook. We moved our Rotary office to the YCEA building at 140 Roosevelt Avenue, Suite 209. We enjoyed fellowship during our Love for Community event, raising 37,000 for causes focused on racial justice, human trafficking survivors, breaking down the barriers of urban relations, making childcare affordable, and providing an outlet for youth in the city through Little League. Because of the philanthropic intent of the Charitable Endowment Fund Board and the generosity of our club, we were able to aid Haiti in the aftermath of a natural disaster. This spring, we raised 25,000 for the Ukraine Humanitarian Crisis Recovery Fund. Through the efforts of our members in support of the Rotary Foundation, which focuses on global and local societal improvement, we raised a record-breaking nearly $50,000 and honored 65 Paul Harris Fellows just this year. We have seven Paul Harris Society members and in total, our membership has been awarded 173 Paul Harris Fellows. Our Rotary Grants Committee awarded six grants totaling 40,000 to community organizations for worthwhile projects like the Community Progress Council's Parking Lot Play and York Parks and Recreation's Back to School Resources Fair. The Student Education Committee awarded 19 scholarships totaling nearly 35,000 to students attending college next year, and we'll have a chance to meet those students this summer. Rotarians are humanitarians passionate about people and causes. Our Global Grants Committee offered financial support to Honduras in 2020 that resulted in 30 teachers being truly trained just this year with the necessary tools to bring education to remote areas in their country. And we're embarking on a major sanitation project with Rotarians in Sindafa, Ethiopia, building the foundation for a long lasting friendship. Our youth remain a strong focus. And this year we recognized 22 students of the month, recently sending eight of them to the Rila Youth Leadership Program at Messiah College. The Educational Vocational Guidance and JROTC Committee worked diligently to engage and create successful opportunities for students in York City. And we were very pleased to present the Community Service Award to JROTC Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Yamaris Reyes. The Youth Exchange Committee is gearing up to accept students finally. We're having a student coming from Belgium and a student from France, and our outbound student is preparing to study in Slovakia. Rob Bowen arranged for many unique fellowship and networking opportunities, making up for lost time with the return of gatherings. And last week, we invited the Lancaster Rotary Club to join us for a Revs versus Barnstormers game. And we're planning to make this an annual outing. And throughout the year, past president Dick Julian made sure we were remembered on our birthdays. Rotary International President Shaker Mehta challenged us to each one bring one, inviting guests to our weekly meetings to learn about the work of Rotary. In collaboration with the IDEA Committee and Courageous Conversations, 
our membership committee focused on three subcommittees to grow and diversify membership, to improve the membership experience, and to better engage and retain membership as a welcoming organization reflective of our community. This year, we welcomed Elaine Bonneau as the first African-American woman to join our club. In all, 40 new members joined the Rotary Club of York this year. We presented Rotary International's Code of Conduct, including fostering a welcoming and inclusive environment and celebrating diversity. We recognize several volunteers with the Service Above Self Award for their active engagement in making a difference. We work together, planting trees, weeding and gardening the Gateway welcoming site, and cleaning up the Little League baseball fields. We came to the aid of fellow Rotarian Alexis Campbell when the Horn Farm was devastated by fire, offering financial support to rebuild and physical labor to help restore the property. Sadly, we lost three beloved Rotarians, Art Cayley, Keith Smith, and Al Hayes. We remain focused on the goals of our strategic plan to increase funding, to increase awareness and understanding of our mission, to utilize committees effectively, and to create a vibrant, engaged, and diverse membership. There was such a positive energy in this room every week, as well as in our committee work and our outreach activities as we work side by side, older members, younger members, longtime members, and those who have recently joined. It is clear that our connection to one another is essential in building and sustaining relationships. It's the telling of our stories that enables us to better understand one another and to find common ground. It was a great joy to interview and write about 45 of our members in our weekly member moments. Cal Weary was in a rock band with his best friend, Aaron Jacobs, and they were the best man in each other's weddings. We learned that at the age of 65, past President John Schmidt cycled across the country from Seattle to DC. Karen McCormick jumped out of an airplane on a whim in Wichita, Kansas. J. L. Smith was an actor and resident member of the Academy Theater in Atlanta. Ellie Williams is one of only 17 individuals in the United States trained as a practitioner in diathic developmental psychotherapy. Sonam Ruit speaks four languages and following a major earthquake in his native country, Nepal, he collected and personally delivered medical supplies and monetary contributions. Kelly Gibson trained during COVID to become an iron girl, competing in the girl tri sprint in Wisconsin. Fred Fay has hosted more than 30 youth exchange students. Jen May earned her doctorate degree while a mother of a 17 month old and a five week old. Dick Sloan, Dick Sloan flew as a flight surgeon in Desert Storm, Desert Shield, and Iraqi Freedom. Jean Truthart officiates weddings on most weekends from May to October. Christian Fitzpatrick ran security for convoys traveling to and from the Air Force base in Afghanistan. Tom McCracken's mother is a polio survivor and the Rotary Foundation's efforts in eradicating polio is very personal for him. Courtney Piccolo decided that the age of 12 was old enough to drive and so she confiscated the family car and went for a ride. Jerry Watson was once mistaken for a member of the US Olympic gold medal men's hockey team. Walt Tilly learned how to fly when he was in elementary school and he's been an advocate for youth and youth exchange for over a quarter of a century. We learned that Sean Kenny has the gift of gab. No, wait, we already knew that. And he, he hails from Ireland, his family hails from Ireland, and he loves to visit family there. Dee Baker created a partnership with professional sports teams to launch the successful No More campaign on behalf of battered women. Ray Rosen is a first-generation American. His parents were Holocaust survivors, losing hundreds of relatives in concentration camps. Andy Rowett smuggled information to the Allies in Nazi-occupied Warsaw and was captured and put on a train to Auschwitz before being rescued. Jane Schusler worked on Capitol Hill and considered running for political office. Jules Tolbert flew B-52s and was a B-2 stealth bomber pilot. And past president Dick Julian lived on three continents and worked on five. Every one of you has a story to tell 
and I wish I could have shared them all. I would like to extend a very special thank you to past president Andra, who offered her friendship, her friendship and encouragement throughout this year. It was such a privilege to serve alongside the talented and hardworking Doug Berman, Aaron Jacobs, and Glenn Miller, who brought their knowledge and sense of humor to our executive committee. Thank you to our outgoing directors who served the board faithfully and offered wise counsel, Dennis Bachman, Steve Feldman, and Chris Toff. And a special thank you to past president Brian Tate for his unwavering commitment to Rotary and to the Charitable Endowment Fund Board. We have 29 active and hardworking committees who make Rotary a priority and contribute to our success. Thank you to the chairs and members of these committees. You bring great depth to our club. Thank you to our executive director, Lynn Morrison and Becky Rook, who keep the wheels on the bus, making sure our club runs smoothly, not only at our weekly meetings, but in all they do behind the scenes. I'd also like to recognize our tech team, Daniel Lorenzo, Lindsay Barna, and Melanie Chrisamore, who are here each week to connect our Rotarians virtually and to manage our tech needs. And thank you, Chris Toff, for stepping up when we had a tech need and found people to fill the void. And Ken Cooper is a Rotarian who quietly gives of his time and talent with little recognition, but is always willing to lend a helping hand. Thank you, Ken. And thank you to the Country Club of York. Thank you to General Manager, Rotarian Brian Danahy, and Clubhouse Manager, Shannon Seitz, and your staff for making us feel so welcome each week at the Country Club of York. I'm very proud to be among the Magnificent Seven, the awesome women who have led the Rotary Club of York so far. There are more to come. Ah, and thank you to past president Mike Summers for being my biggest cheerleader and supporter. Your wisdom and integrity exemplify what it means to be a Rotarian. Thank you for the time you dedicate to planning our incredible program lineup and you make every president look good. While we're the first couple to hold a distinction of each having served as president, I am very confident that we're, there will be many more couples in our club to come. In the 106 years since our inception, we continue to hold true to our values and ideals, working toward bettering ourselves and our community. I'm reminded of a quote I shared a while ago from Henry Ford, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. I love this club and I am honored to have been your president this year. Thank you all for serving to change lives, I'm so glad we had this time together just to share a laugh or sing a song. Seems we just got started and before you know it comes the time I have to say so long. Thank you all. Thank you so much. And what do you say, just for old time's sake? Could we do one more member moment? Would that be all right? Just for old time's sake. Trombonist, arranger, composer, band leader, and best selling recording artist, Glenn Miller, Renaissance man. Well, this Glenn Miller is a Renaissance man too. And don't you think there's a striking resemblance? could be a relative. <clears throat> Glenn fell in love with music at an early age and has a distinction of selection to first chair of vocalist bass in the state of Pennsylvania among high school students in 1976. He planned to pursue a career as a professional musician and vocalist attending the conservatory at Shenandoah University where he earned a degree in vocal performance. But upon the influence of the college chaplain who remains a longtime friend, he entered the seminary at Lutheran Seminary in Gettysburg. He began pastoring a church in Hanover before being called to serve as its senior pastor for 10 years at St. Paul's in Spring Grove. 
He combined his love for pastoring with his love for philanthropy and has made a successful career as an advancement officer and a parish pastor. While he pursued his degree in classical music, he discovered a real love for the American songbook, jazz, big band, quartets, and he's never happier than when he's in front of a big band and a microphone doing his best Frank Sinatra. He sang with the Philadelphia Jazz Cats and has filled in for several big bands. He is currently a member of the classical ensemble Wheatland Chorale in Lancaster. He was a radio announcer through high school, college, and part of seminary. He decided he needed a break before entering the seminary and worked full time in 1980 for a radio station in Northern Virginia. As the station's news director assigned to the 1980 presidential election, he attended a large outdoor event where he rubbed elbows with Dan Rather, Harry Reisner, and Nancy and Ronald Reagan. He remembers hanging back while the crowd hurried toward Reagan and turning around, he bumped right into Elizabeth Taylor. <clears throat> well, Glenn and Liz had a, shared a lengthy conversation and he says he's still recovering from that. <clears throat> he remembers her eyes were just as violet as you've seen in the movies. After he composed himself, he asked her what it was like having people traipsing all over her property. She smiled, batted her famous eyelashes and replied, well, darling, these are just 5,000 of my closest friends. Tom Norris proposed Glenn to Rotary, and he's joining us today virtually from his home in Naples, Florida. Glenn and his wife, Carol, have been married for 34 years and are quite smitten with their 10-month-old granddaughter, Adelaide, who lives in Australia with their daughter and son-in-law. And now for the rest of the story. Fellow Rotarians and guests, at this time, it is my pleasure to invite Tony Campisi to the podium to introduce our next Rotary Club of York president, Glenn Miller. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you, Jackie, once again, for your uh, service and leadership, not only here at Rotary, but throughout our entire community. Um, I may be a new member here at Rotary, but it's pretty clear to me that you've been a very dedicated, diligent, knowledgeable, thoughtful, well-spoken, friendly, courteous, and engaging president. You will be a very tough act to follow for whoever has to follow you. <laughs> and speaking of who gets to follow Jackie, I have the distinct privilege today of introducing Glenn Miller, who will be inducted as the incoming president of the Rotary Club of York. Glenn will be the 107th president of Rotary and will serve in this role from July of 2022 through June of 2023. Now as to why I'm the person introducing Glenn, I think a little background would be helpful. The first and most relevant reason is because Glenn asked me. I, of course, responded that I would be honored to introduce Glenn as the incoming president. I then asked Glenn if he would be kind enough to send me his thoughts on what I should include in my introduction. Now, I think most of you know that Glenn uh, and uh, is uh, someone who has exceptional knowledge and skills in the world of philanthropy. But as you've heard, he is also a pastor and Lutheran minister. He's a man of deep faith with an in-depth knowledge of the Bible. So it didn't come as a surprise to me when Glenn sent me this three inch thick binder <laughs> containing his thoughts on what to say. So knowing it would be a bit too much for today's introduction, uh, I decided to just go it alone, especially when I read the first paragraph when I opened the binder. The words began, in the beginning. <laughs> it was in for a long read. So while it's certainly relevant that Glenn asked me to introduce him uh, today, I think the why is far more important. I first met Glenn about eight years ago when he was the president of Spirit Trust Lutheran Foundation. At the time, I was serving on the Committee for Spirit Trust's annual Cornerstone Dinner. 
and later joined the board of the foundation where I worked closely with Glenn on a wide array of fundraising initiatives for Spirit Trust Founda Lutheran Foundation. Glenn and I worked so well together that I later became chair of the Spirit Trust Foundation board. As the years progressed and Glenn transitioned to a position with your college as the senior director of philanthropy, we became very good friends. How good? Well, in addition to frequent dinners and social gatherings with our wives, Glenn and Carol invited Steph and I to attend their daughter's wedding in August of 2019. Of course, we responded yes. And I asked Glenn, so where is Sarah getting married? Glenn's response was, well, she's getting married at her alma mater. I said, wonderful. Where's that? Glenn says, Oxford. I said, I looked at him and said, you mean Oxford as in Oxford, England? He said, well, of course. So we made the trip to Oxford and were part of celebrating a once in a lifetime moment of joy and happiness for Glenn and Carol and their family. And we made some wonderful memories that we will always cherish. Now, later that same year, our eldest son, uh, was uh, getting married, and his wedding was taking place on New Year's Eve. By the way, it was a local event. We, of course, invited Glenn and Carol to attend, and they readily accepted the invitation. It so happened, though, that the day before the wedding, the minister that was to perform the ceremony caught the flu and could not perform her official duties. So what did I do? I called on my good friend, Glenn Miller. I said, Glenn, would you consider performing the wedding ceremony tomorrow evening? Without any hesitation, Glenn said he would be delighted to perform the ceremony. I must ask you, how many of us have that type of a friend that in less than 24 hours, they perform a wedding ceremony for your son or daughter? Pretty special. Now, all this background is a long way of saying that Steph and I have a very special friendship with Glenn and Carol. And for that reason, I am delighted that Glenn asked me to introduce him and consider it a privilege to be making his introduction as the incoming president of the Rotary Club of York. Now, we all know the leadership qualities required of a person in the role of president, and they are numerous. Some of the more important qualities that come to mind to me are integrity and courage to do the right thing, a commitment of service to others, being dedicated and committed to the mission of the organization, being a strategic and critical thinker, being authentic and having a sense of self-awareness, exhibiting strong interpersonal communication skills, being open-minded and creative, flexible and adaptable, exhibiting responsibility and dependability, having a vision for the future. I want to assure everyone here that your incoming president possesses all of these leadership qualities and more. We should all feel very confident about inducting Glenn Miller as the next president of the Rotary Club of York. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my good friend and our next president, Glenn Miller. This is the passing of the pin. Glenn Miller, do you solemnly pledge to fulfill the duties of the office of president of the Rotary Club of York to the best of your ability to advance the purposes of Rotary and to abide by the Rotary motto of service above self? If so, answer, I do. I do. I hereby declare you installed as the president of the Rotary Club of York. Thank 
So my remarks next, right? Yep, it's down there. Well, first, uh, I want to thank Jackie for the very gracious uh, and final member moment of her presidency. Thank you very much. Um, she has a remarkable way of weaseling things out of you when she interviews you for these things. Uh, quite, quite remarkable. Um, Second, uh, my thanks to my very dear friend, Tony Campisi. Uh, do I know how to choose an introducer or what? Thank you very much for uh, that absurdly generous introduction. Now, do I go on with my stuff? Okay. The, the other ends? Yes. Yeah, so okay. It's right here. This is going to go really smoothly, folks. <laughs> Very good. Now we have some other installations before I continue. Jackie. <clears throat> it is my honor not only to follow you as the president of this club, but today to present you with the past president's diamond pin. Well deserved, Madam President. Now, those who are present, uh, would you please run? Yeah. Okay. yeah, this too. <clears throat> it wasn't in the script. <clears throat> it's, it's right there. All right, it was in the script. All right. <laughs> this has gone real well so far. Okay. Uh, and a, a gavel. I told uh, President Gunter Smith that the president here gets a gavel, and they even give you one when you leave. So, Jackie, all yours. Thank you. You, you can use that with Mike and whatever way you want. Now, let's see if we can uh, smooth this out. Would um, I know that Aaron Jacobs is uh, not here today. He is uh, joining us, he hoped, electronically. But uh, would Aaron uh, rise virtually if he's with us? Courtney Bailey Piccolo and Doug Berman, if you are present. Uh, all right, one out of three. Do you promise and accept to uh, undertake the charges of the office to which you are elected? And will you work with diligence for the betterment of the club? If so, answer saying, I do. Congratulations, Madam President-elect nominee. And now new directors to the board would D. Baker, Jen May, Joan Mummert, and Jules Tolbert please rise if you are present. If you're not present, you don't have to rise. Do each of you solemnly pledge to fulfill the duties as a director to the best of your ability to advance the purposes of Rotary and to abide by the Rotary motto of service above self? If so, answer saying, I do. I hereby declare you installed as directors of the Rotary Club of York. Congratulations and welcome. And finally, this is not an, an installation, but I want to acknowledge J.T. Hand, Bill Hartman, Alan Roth, and Cal Weary. If you're here, please rise. These good folks are continuing in their roles on the board of directors. We're grateful for your continued service. Thank you very much. Okay, so the bottom line, Oh, I'm supposed to have a clicker, and I have the clicker. The bottom line here is that you have uh, heard enough already about me, and so I want to use uh, my brief new president's remarks time for something a little different and unusual. I hope you will indulge me, not that you actually have a choice in the matter. <laughs> so um, I want to talk to you not about me, 
uh, but I want to talk to you about this handsome devil up on the screen. No, I am not talking about the admittedly adorable kid on the left. I'm talking about his father on the right. That's David Eugene Miller. Very big ears, you will notice. Even a bigger heart. During his service in the Second World War, my father contracted malaria. Not an unusual things, thing in the jungles of the South Pacific. He would go on to suffer 17 attacks of malaria in the coming three and a half years of the war, which frequently left him in a hospital bed in Guam or uh, Fiji or somewhere else in that area with a lot of time on his hands. My father was not a man who could tolerate being idle for very long. That was something he passed on to his son. So during his first or second hospitalization, his mother, knowing this, sent him a little gift, just something to while away the hours. It was a, a set of speedball calligraphy pens, a bottle of ink, and a guidebook. And over the course of the war, with that little gift, my father taught himself the art of calligraphy. It was just supposed to be a little thing to help him pass the time in a hospital bed. It would ultimately be one of the most important gifts my father ever received. By the time he got home, word had apparently already spread about his newfound talent, probably because all of the letters that he sent home were looking more and more beautiful uh, with each passing one. Before he could unpack his duffel bag, he was getting requests to put his newfound talent to work. It began with his church, which started asking him to do things like engraving the names of kids on Bibles and hymnals that were being given out. Soon he was lettering every baptismal certificate, not just at that church, but many others, every wedding certificate. His high school, John Harris High, asked him to do the diplomas, which he did for many years. When I graduated college, he would do the lettering on my class's diplomas. Over the course of over 40 years, my father would share this gift with dozens of institutions, thousands and thousands of individuals. Today, his work is hanging in the homes and offices of many people around the country and around the world. Why am I telling you this lovely story, you are wondering? Well, because it is a story of service above self. My father never served on a committee, certainly never served on a board. He was never, to my knowledge, a member of any club, let alone the president of one. But throughout my life, I witnessed him quietly devote hour after hour, night after night, after finishing his day job, to sharing this gift with others. He never made one thin dime off of any of it. He was a man of very few words, but when I asked him once why he didn't charge people for this beautiful work, and let me tell you, he could have used the money. He told me that the way he looked at it was he was given a talent it was a gift, and the thing that you do with gifts is that you give them away. I am a slow learner. That's something they should have told you about me before you elected me as your president. So it was only years later, well into my adulthood, that I realized what my father had quietly, almost wordlessly taught me. The man who, again, had never served on a board, never joined a club, certainly had never stood at a microphone in front of a couple of hundred community leaders, had taught me more about service to others and service above self than any other soul ever has. His example prepared me to use the gifts that I have, such as they may be, in service to others. He's the only reason I'm standing here today. He showed me how it's done. So thanks for giving him a long overdue moment in the limelight.
I know he's watching because I'm wearing his cufflinks and his watch. I wanna conclude with a few thank yous. My thanks to my guests who graciously took time to be here today, President Gunter Smith, Cindy Riesinger, former Rotarian and city councilman, Henry Nixon, and my colleague, Jennifer D'Angelo. My thanks to my friend, past district governor, Patty Rooney for joining us today. I wanna to also thank Tom Norris, who as uh, Tony mentioned is on uh, with us virtually for the wise counsel that he gave me 11 years ago when I sat down with him and I said, do you have any advice for me starting out in this new position? And the very first thing he said was, you need to join the Rotary Club of York. It was sage advice. I wanna thank the club leadership for electing me to this role. It is an enormous privilege for which I'm very grateful and that I do not take for granted. I wanna thank all of those who have come before me in the office, but I want to single out especially my two immediate predecessors, Ann Druck and Jackie Summers. When you say yes to being president, they don't tell you that your work actually starts two full years before your presidency. So two years ago, just as the pandemic was starting, we began working together through what was arguably one of the most challenging periods in this club's 106 year history. They also showed me how it's done. The saying is true. We stand upon the shoulders of giants. You are both giants. Thank you very much. I also want to thank York College. Not every employer recognizes the importance of having their employees serve in the community and still fewer choose to tangibly support that service. It is a gift I also do not take for granted and that I am very grateful for. And I'd say it even if my president wasn't sitting here right now. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to thank my wife, Carol. Doing things like this, which I have been doing pretty much throughout all of our marriage as, is something that takes a great deal of time. All of you in this room do the same thing. You know what I'm talking about. And you can't really do it well without being supported at home. So I thank you very much for that, dear. Again, my thanks to all of you. So our club meeting next week will feature Cassandra Coleman, Executive Director for the America 250 PA Initiative. Pennsylvania is the birthplace of democracy. Almost 250 years ago, 13 colonies convened in Philadelphia to sign the Declaration of Independence, a document that conveys the ideals of equality, liberty, and government by consent of the governed. These ideals help us identify the cornerstone of our rights and responsibilities as Americans and Pennsylvanians. It will be a great program, and I hope that you will be here for it. Finally, our new Rotary International President has chosen as her theme for the year, rather than a phrase or a sentence, a single word, imagine. Imagine Rotary. I personally love this. Throughout the year, every meeting of our club will end with a quote, either selected by various members of our club or other community leaders or composed by them, a quote that invokes and includes this word. They will hopefully inspire us to imagine great things for this club and the community and the world that we serve. And so, I'm going to start it in the first week. Imagine a Rotary Club of York that reflects in every way the diversity of humanity, the breadth of leadership, and the depth of goodness already present in our York community. I'm often asked if I have a vision for the year. That's it. Rotarians, thank you again. This meeting is adjourned. I get to do this for the first time.